Welcome to the Daily History Podcast, where every encounter with the past is a journey to understanding our present. Today, we delve into the hidden world of the samurai, culture, and legacy, a riveting exploration of feudal Japan's most iconic warriors. Prepare to be transported through time as we uncover the spirit and the sword of the samurai. Venturing back into the heart of feudal Japan, a land ruled by the sharp edge of the sword and the unwavering spirit of duty, we find ourselves mystified by the warrior elite renowned as the samurai. Born from the tumultuous eras of early and medieval Japanese history, these warriors first arose in the late Heian period, with their name derived from the verb saburao, meaning to serve. The samurai were more than just soldiers. They were the military nobility entrusted with the responsibility of protecting the realm and its ruling classes. Deeply entrenched within the fabric of the Japanese social structure was a rigid hierarchy, at the pinnacle of which sat the emperor, followed closely by the shogun, the military commander who often held the actual power. Below them were the daimyo, the powerful feudal lords, to whom the samurai pledged their felty. This system formed the backbone of society, influencing politics, economics, and culture for centuries. Questions linger, however, about the forces that forged the samurai's compelling allure, which survives even to this day. The foundations laid in the 8th and 9th centuries saw these warriors initially serve as provincial officials, tasked with ensuring the central government's authority extended into the rural areas. As their influence grew, so too did the complexity of their role, evolving into a class of skilled archers, horsemen, and strategists hailed for their martial prowess. By the 12th century, the samurai had become an indispensable part of the political power play, leaving us to wonder, what was it about their code, their lifestyle, their very essence that continues to captivate our fascination? We now pivot to the very foundations that underline the existence of the samurai, Bushido, often known as the Way of the Warrior. This moral code shaped not only the samurai's conduct in battle, but also permeated their entire way of life, training, and philosophy. The word Bushido itself translates roughly as the Way of the Warrior, a strict ethical guideline that dictated the expected behavior of a samurai. The significance of Bushido cannot be overstated. It was a fusion of native Japanese thought, Zen Buddhism, Confucianism, and Shintoism, emerging fully in the early modern period of Japan during the 17th century. Bushido was never a formalized set of rules, but rather an organic expression of the samurai class's understanding of honor and propriety. It was a path walked in pursuit of both martial excellence and personal enlightenment. Bushido revolved around seven central virtues. The first, gi, represented rectitude or justice, urging the samurai to make decisions with a swift and resolute morality. Yu embodied heroic courage, a braveness tinged not with recklessness, but with a serene confidence. Then there was Jin, expressing compassion, teaching the warrior to bear a steadfast empathy amidst the severities of warfare. Following these were Rei, courtesy, which necessitated a samurai to exhibit politeness and respect as inherent traits, and Makoto, or sincerity and truthfulness, ensuring that a samurai's word was his bond. Chugi, fidelity, emphasized unquestionable loyalty, particularly to one's lord, often the samurai's most defining quality. Lastly, Meio, honor, crowned the virtues by compelling a samurai to hold their esteem above all else, for losing it meant losing the very purpose of their existence. The practical implications of these virtues were profound. The samurai's lifelong training, physically, tactically, and philosophically, was rooted in Bushido, often involving swordsmanship, archery, martial arts like jujutsu, and strategy games like go and shogi, which mirrored the complexity of military tactics. These activities cultivated a disciplined mind, ready to face the chaos of battle with equanimity. Bushido, therefore, was the heartbeat of the samurai's existence, whether in times of war where it offered a framework for bravery and strategy, or in peace, where it guided their role as stewards of culture and administration. It was their way of life and their path to death, for seppuku, or ritual suicide, was also considered an act under Bushido, 
reserved for restoring honor in the face of disgrace. In this way, Bushido shaped not just the individual warrior, but also the structure of Japanese feudal society. Japan, an archipelago steeped in tradition, was once sliced into fragments by the blades of ruling samurai clans. The dawn of the Sengoku period in the 15th century marked the beginning of a ferocious era where decentralized power and relentless clan rivalries spawned over a century of strife. It was in this crucible that samurai political savvy and military prowess became pivotal in unfolding the tapestry of Japanese history. The struggle for dominance gave rise to prominent figures such as Oda Nobunaga, a formidable daimyo whose ambition and ruthlessness set the stage for unification. One cannot speak of samurai valor without recalling the 1575 Battle of Nagashino, where Nobunaga's innovative tactics and arquebus volleys decimated the legendary Takeda cavalry. His path to power, however, was cut short in the flames of Honoji in 1582, demonstrating the precarious fate of even the great. Nobunaga's legacy of conquest was inherited by Toyotomi Hideyoshi, a strategist of exceptional craft. His role in key siege battles, like that of Odawara in 1590, toppled the Hojo clan and effectively unified Japan. Yet, peace was ephemeral. The Battle of Sekigahara in 1600 was the culminating clash of samurai armies and the ascension of Tokugawa Ieyasu, heralding the advent of a new shogunate. The Tokugawa shogunate ushered an unprecedented era of peace known as the Edo period. It was within the calm confines of castle towns that the samurai evolved from warriors into bureaucrats and scholars. No longer were the swords drawn in earnest, instead they rested as symbols of status, while the samurai navigated through complex political landscapes and administrative duties. Their role during these times of peace, however, was not less significant. Samurai became the stewards of Bushido, the way of the warrior, imbibing a rigorous code that integrated martial arts with Zen, Confucianism, and Shinto for a harmonious society. Their ink-drawn philosophies juxtaposed the legacy of bloodshed, signaling an evolution of their identity and function within a changing Japan. But peace can be as treacherous as war. The twilight years of the Edo period saw the iconic status of the samurai wane under economic strains and the push for modernization. The arrival of Commodore Perry's black ships in 1853 was a cannon-shot wake-up call that echoed the imminent end of an era and the final dissolution of the samurai class following the Meiji Restoration. The age of war, brimming with political maneuvers and military exploits, carved an immortal image of the samurai. From battlefields soaked in valor to peaceful scrolls imbued with wisdom, the samurai embodied the dichotomy of Japan's journey through feudal autocracy to a nation-state. Their prominence during conflict and their adaptability in peace are testaments to their indelible influence on the fabric of Japanese culture. As the dawn of modernity rose over Japan, the era of the samurai began to set. The mid-19th century marked significant political and social upheaval as Japan found itself at a crossroads challenged by foreign powers and internal contention. The arrival of Commodore Perry's black ships in 1853 was a catalyst for change, exposing Japan's relative isolation and lack of industrialization. The samurai class, which had long stood as the embodiment of monument of military proficiency and honor, found their position eroding amidst the waves of modernization. The feudal system which had supported their status began to buckle under the weight of Western influence and internal economic troubles. The Satsuma Rebellion of 1877, led by the fabled Saigo Takamori, a celebrated samurai, marked the last stand of samurai military dominance, ending in defeat and the tragic demise of Saigo. In the political realm, the Meiji Restoration of 1868 was the cornerstone that set Japan on a dramatic new course. Emperor Meiji sought to centralize power and reinvent Japan as a modern, industrial nation-state. As part of this transformation, the samurai class was systematically dismantled, stripped of their privileges, their right to carry swords, and their status as a warrior caste. The Haitore Edict in 1876 forbade the wearing of the katana, symbolically sheathing the samurai's blade forever. 
As we reflect on this pivotal chapter, the Meiji leaders embraced Western technologies and methodologies, overhauling the military, economy, and bureaucracy. The samurai became a vestige of the past, some adapting to become leaders and influencers in business, government, and education, leveraging their discipline and literacy in the new Japan. Others struggled with the loss of identity and purpose, their lives immortalized in the romantic narratives of authors and playwrights. Thus, the legacy of the samurai transitioned from the battlefield to the very fabric of modern Japanese culture and identity. Venturing into the realm of art and cinema, we see the samurai not merely as figures of the past, but as cultural icons whose influence has transcended the borders of history and geography. The romanticization of these ancient warriors has woven them into the fabric of modern storytelling, giving rise to a global fascination with their legacy. Literature and film have played pivotal roles in shaping the contemporary image of the samurai, often prioritizing compelling narratives over historical accuracy. This dramatization can be traced back to the early 20th century, with novels such as Bushido, The Soul of Japan by Inazo Nitobe, published in 1900, portraying the samurai with a sense of noble idealism. The silver screen further accentuated the allure of samurai culture through Akira Kurosawa's cinematic masterpieces like Seven Samurai, 1954, and Yojimbo, 1961, which cast the samurai in both traditional and mythologized lights. These films, with their tales of honor, bravery, and skill, captivated audiences far beyond Japan, igniting an enduring interest in the ethos of the samurai. Yet, as commanding as these depictions are, they often diverge from historical reality. The real lives of samurai were bound by rigid social structures and dictated by the needs of war and diplomacy. The romanticized samurai, who follows a strict personal code of honor, represents only a fragment of the complex societal roles they actually played. While the cinematic samurai stands alone against injustice, history shows us that they were also enforcers of the status quo, sometimes even perpetrators of brutality in service to their lords. Despite such discrepancies between fact and fiction, the influence of samurai imagery is undeniable in both Japanese and global culture. It has inspired modern-day martial arts philosophies, fashion trends, and even corporate business strategies, with the term samurai symbolizing a model of discipline, loyalty, and strategic thinking. Characters fashioned after the samurai have also permeated comic books and video games, embodying the timeless appeal of the warrior philosopher. In sum, the samurai's journey from historical figures to cultural symbols is a testament to their multidimensional legacy. Literature and cinema have played essential roles in this transformation, a process replete with both romanticism and simplification. Yet, the global captivation with samurai imagery underlines a deeper, universal yearning for the ideals they've come to represent, courage, honor, and unwavering resolve. As we unsheathe the legacy of the samurai, carrying over from centuries past into our modern world, we unearth influences that extend far beyond the battlefield. Today, the ethos of these warriors reverberates through contemporary society in Japan and beyond. Whether in corporate boardrooms or in personal conduct, the imprint of samurai culture is indelible, shaping principles and practices across various spheres of life. The spiritual legacy of the samurai stands as a testament to their profound impact on society, particularly in modern-day Japan, where the essence of their philosophy, a balance of martial discipline and artistic sensibility, prevails. This duality is reflected in cultural ceremonies, traditional arts, and even in the meticulous approach to everyday tasks. The West, too, has adopted elements of this legacy, with concepts such as loyalty, honor, and diligence resonating deeply within leadership seminars and self-improvement literature. But one can't reflect on the samurai without grappling with the inherent contradictions in their history. The samurai have been both exalted as paragons of honor and chivalry and vilified as agents of brutality and oppression. This dichotomy of violence and honor raises profound questions about the moral complexities of samurai life. The samurai class wasn't monolithic, 
Their actions ranged from heroic sacrifices to ruthless power struggles. And yet, it is the ideals, the courage, self-control, and sense of duty that continue to captivate the imagination, informing our understanding of integrity and ethical conduct. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the hidden world of the samurai. If you've enjoyed this glimpse into the past, don't forget to subscribe for more tales from history. Have a topic you're curious about? Drop a comment below this podcast, and the suggestion with the most likes could be the focus of a future episode. Your insights drive our exploration, and together we unravel the mysteries of history. Until next time, keep the spirit of curiosity alive. This 